News Radio 700 WLW. All right, back with Eddie and Rocky. And Brock, you know, when you think about the Supreme Court, you think about, you know, freedom of religion, abortion, all that all that crazy the stuff, the stuff that tears the nation asunder. And then you hear about stuff like this that they're trying to press through the Supreme Court. And you don't know that stuff happens, but it happens too. So I guess the Supreme Court is getting ready to hear a case uh, involving Jack Daniels, who has taken a dog toy company uh, to court, claiming they make their dog toy look um, too much like a Jack Daniels bottle. And yes, you're right. To think that this is at the Supreme Court is mind-boggling, but but very true. Well, let's talk to our good friend, the patent professor. Uh, it is our good friend, John Rizvi. And, hey, John, how does something like this go? It's not before. Didn't it get rejected once, but they're pressing it again, eh? It did. Um, uh, always a pleasure to be here. And, and I couldn't have been for a, a crazier case than this, but um, I, I guess the intellectual property is getting more and more interesting day by day. So uh, they, they did. They're looking at the similarity i mean jack daniels of course is uh is claiming that it's a dilution of their their trademark rights and the reason it's you know it's it's gotten all the way to the supreme court is there's essentially a need for guidance as to where uh the commerce clause uh you know the right for congress to regulate commerce where that stops uh and the First Amendment rights to free speech start. So that's wow. that's really what they're asking the court to assist with. I mean, the maker of the dog toy is claiming that it's expressive speech and that, that the trademark rights are unfairly infringing on on a parody. Essentially, they're, they're, wow. they say it's a joke. Wow. Uh, John, and, 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 before we get ahead of ourselves, and I think we explained that, that it's a dog toy shaped like a little Jack Daniels bottle, and and it's the same labeling and such, but everything on there has to do with like your dog pooping on your rug and stuff. Yeah, instead of <laughs> instead of old number seven brand Tennessee yeah. Sour Mash whiskey on the bottle, it says the old number two on your sen- on your Tennessee carpet. Right. So and it's, it's called it's bad tongue and cheek, bad yeah. spaniels instead of yes. Jack Daniels. Yes. Yep, bad spaniels, and then instead of forty percent alcohol by volume, it's forty three percent poo. Uh, Jack Daniels doesn't <laughs> clearly does not think this is funny. Um, uh, they they believe you know, and, it, and partly they're saying that consumers are not really there's not a lot of reading of the text that people see the font, they see the shape of the bottle, the impression is the same, and it it you know, and it's confusing consumers. That's that's part of their take. So, John, to me, that this is the the big question. Um, I don't think there's there's any question that this bad spaniels company <laughs> made their toy purposefully to look like a Jack Daniels. But if they claim otherwise, I don't know if they have any ground to stand on. But what? How much is? I mean, how much? Um, how alike does it have to be? Is it? Is it? Is there a number amount? Well, if three things are similar, five things. If it was looked like the Jack Daniels bottle, but uh, didn't have, um, did, didn't make the label look quite the same. I just feel like there's there's got to be a a tipping point of what's okay versus okay. Now you've gone too far and you're making it look too much like our in this case Jack Daniels bottle. Yeah. So unfortunately, there's no there, there's no like number or mathematical percentage or anything like that it's it's uh comes down to consumer confusion like here i don't think uh uh i I don't think it's going to be a really tough to show that consumers uh, are actually confused it looks it's it's, you know it's not going to be confused nobody's going to try to drink from the dog toy uh and, and such um a similar case comes to mind where the court held that it was clear parody, and it's 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 very similar in the sense that it's also a dog toy, Chewy Vuitton, um, and it's a chewable dog toy in the shape of a purse. Uh, so, uh, and 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 that was found not to be, not 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 to violate any trademark rights, um, and uh, you know, and and to to the extent as to why Jack Daniels is 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 
is enforcing this or trying to enforce it, a, a lot of there's a, a duty on trademark holders to enforce their marks and to police them, so to speak. And if they don't do that, then they, their rights become diluted. It, it makes it harder. So part of it might be that they're simply going through and making, trying to make sure that they take the appropriate steps yeah. uh, to diligently try to protect their IP. It's, it's, it's not, I don't know, I don't have any, I've just run some informal surveys on, uh, on our own patent professor uh, social media pages, and it's almost 100% in favor of the dog toy saying that, that Jack Daniels is, is, needs to lighten up and, and get a sense of humor so I think in the court of public opinion, it, it's certainly uh, not to their benefit to to push this. And w when you talk about parody, it, wouldn't this affect like uh, if Jack Daniels would win, say, wouldn't that affect whatever, a TV show, what Saturday Night Live does a fake commercial with the, something like this? C couldn't they sue them? If it, it, it seems like this could just really chase its tail for a while. It, it 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 does, and in fact, uh, but you know, on the other hand, the the concern is if all a potential infringer has to do is is you know is, is be funny uh, to get around someone's trademark rights. That's that's the opposite extreme. That parody should not be uh, be uh, used to uh, disparage a mark or kind of dilute the, the the strength of a trademark. So it is a delicate balancing act that that has to be done there's prior case law ties it to expressive uh expressive uh, uh, uh expression and and it you know the question is is that you know the more it's a commercial product uh the less the free speech aspects kick in and this this is a little bit tougher than the earlier case law this is clearly a commercial product it's not it's not a movie it's not a play it's not uh you know somebody Free speech in the in the traditional sense of uh, of, uh, of of a parade or a uh, a public gathering where they're talking about it. This is a commercial product for profit, uh, and, mm. and and they have to. We're, you know, the Supreme Court is is going to help draw the line as to where that line is between a First Amendment right to free speech and to parody, uh, and where trademark law prevents that because clearly there is there are restrictions on free speech i mean the the constitutional right to free speech doesn't prevent a lot of doesn't prevent hate speech doesn't allow someone to go in a theater and yell fire there's restrictions on free speech and whether the trademark rights and lanham act is going to kick in and prevent parody of of trademarks and how much mm -hmm. Well, and John, as you're describing this, I, I see both sides here. I, I see where, you know, the dog toy companies like, and probably other people are like, come on, you're Jack Daniels. You're this behemoth. It, it could even make the argument that it looks a little bit beneath Jack Daniels to go after a dog toy company. But I see the other side, which is they're saying, hey, if we continue to let this go on, well, what's next? And then all of a sudden we're, you know, people kind of um, see us as like a, like a gag or like, no, we're like a serious, you know, you know, tried and true American whiskey company here. You know, so we, I remember when we talked to you about Elvis, and it's like, okay, what's the big deal if someone wants to be an Elvis um, impersonator or, you know, do the wedding themed Elvis and all that? I remember you saying the family doesn't want the real brand of Elvis to be diluted. Could you not make the case that this is something similar with how Jack Daniels is handling this? Well, that yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, they they don't want their whiskey associated with with dog poo. So I, I can see, I mean, I, I can, you know, you I said can it much more succinctly um, than I did. Yes. <laughs> you know, I mean, especially, I mean, if they had to pick, if they if they were allowed to take a a, a sharpie and cross out anything on this label, I think the forty three percent poo would be one of the things that that gets crossed out um, on it. But yes, yeah, so that's. That, that's a big part of it. They're they're also claiming, and and I think this may be a little bit far fetched that they're, uh, uh, you know, that they are trying to, to that it's an adult product, whiskey, and they're that that it's making it harder for them 
to not market to kids because pet toys are something kids play with and that kids are not going to be introduced to alcoholic beverage. I, it just seems, that part just seems kind of bizarre. Like, um, and in fact, the, the, the dog toy company responded and said, you know, mo the only people that are really, if, you're, if your eight-year-old is recognizing a bottle of Jack Daniels whiskey as the dog toy, then he already knew about the whiskey. We're not. <laughs> we're not <it's, laughs> why, is, why is Fluffy drinking Daddy's special drink? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if, if, if your six or eight-year-old are making the connection, they already had made the connection prior to the dog toy. They knew about the Jack Daniels whiskey. So, no, this is not. The dog toy is not promoting underage drinking or like any of these kind of kind of bizarre arguments that I've that I've seen. Uh, but like I said, this is this is a strange case on all fronts. Um, and, uh, uh, and and but it, but an important case because it's really going to determine uh, the rights of trademark owners going forward and and how strong protection they can get and and stop in stopping parodies uh, versus how much leeway being funny is going to allow, uh, you know, commercial oh. products. Like, oh. can you, can you, if the commercial product is funny enough, can you then basically parody anything and, and, and make a profit it's, and under the guise of free speech? So uh, with that, John, let's finish up with one last question. The obvious one is, do you, do you see Jack Daniels winning this? Well, I, I, I think they can. It would have to. Uh, it, they, they would have to tie it somehow specifically, very fact specific. Because the big risk, I think, in a case like this, would be, uh, uh, you know, the, the impact on other trademark holders. So if they tie it really uh, specifically to facts, that would that would be a possibility. Um, only because, you know, but the. It's, it's, I don't know. It's, it's a tough call because I mean, if that's the case, then then the Chewy Vuitton is makes a pretty strong argument as well, you know. But they didn't they didn't go all the way to the Supreme Court. So again, that's a lower court See, decision. I, I gotta say, I think Chewy Vuitton defeats bad spaniels. <laughs> that's, that's funny. <laughs> pretty good. Uh, John Rizvi, always a pleasure, buddy. Great Thank stuff. you so much. The Patent Professor. People want to find out more. Where can they go? I do believe it is thepatentprofessor.com, is it not? The, the website's thepatentprofessor.com, and we're everywhere on social media as the Patent Professor, Instagram, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, TikTok, you name it. All right, buddy. Thanks so much. Thank you.